Okay. okay, so we'll do, we'll do the bracha. We're going to learn the base Yosef today. I'll do the bracha, and then we'll do the Hiratzon. Baruch HaTan Anoi Lahina Malchalam Shehakol Miyeh Bidvaru. Amen. And then we'll do our Yehiratzon. I'm learning the Torah. Yehiratzon Melfanecha Adonoi Lohai Shalom Yerad Devar Teka La Yedi Velo Ekeshel Bidvaru Lecha Vismichu Vichaveirai. Velo Omar Atami Taka Velo Atakar Tame Velo Ekeshel Vichaveirai Bidvaru Lecha Vismach Behem Ki Adonoi Yitain Chamem Pidasis Vuna Gami Nai Vilbita Niflos Matora Saka Okay, so we learn the Torah, Rabbi Yaakov ben Asher, the son of the Rosh, Rabbi Asher ben Yechiel. And today we're going to jump into the amazing world of the Beis Yosef, the commentary on the Torah. So quick introduction to Rabbi Karo, who's the Beis Yosef. So it says here, the Beis Yosef, a commentary on the Arba Maturim, the current work of Halakha, Jewish law in his days. In this commentary, Rabbi Karo shows an astounding mastery over the Talmud, the Gemara, the Mishnah, and the legalistic literature of the Middle Ages. He felt called upon to systematize the laws, the halakha, and the customs, the menhagim of the Torah in the face of a de, let's see, disintegration caused by the Spanish expulsion. Okay, so what he's saying in 1492, so I think he was four years old in 1492. His family was, they had to leave, they had to go to Portugal, and then I think in 1497, or even like just five years later, everyone had to leave Portugal, so it was a very turbulent time for the Jewish people. That's when some guy named Columbus came over to here, came over to America, so a lot was going on. So right during this turbulent time, once again, we talked about it before, like in the ancient Roman world, when the Romans started killing the great Talmud and Hakami, they were, create, they were killing the Gedolim, they were creating the, the, killing the Torah scholars, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, Rebbe, he saw there was a need to start writing down notes that would help everyone um, learn, you know, learn the Torah Shabbat path, the oral Torah. And same thing we see here, as the period of the Crusaders and the, the anti-Semitism was off the charts, you know, we have things like, you know, the, uh, the Spanish Inquisition, like all these things going on. Once again, there was a fear that Torah was going to be lost, and the Rishonim in this period, there was like um, probably the same kind of feeling to put everything down to write everything down so like we wouldn't lose and we wouldn't lose the Torah Shabbat Pet. Okay, so he also this famous work, the Shulchan Arach, and this was a con, uh, condensation of his decisions in the Beis Yosef. So what we're going to take, we're, we're going to pay special attention to is we're going to start learning the Beis Yosef and Mr. Hashem very soon we're going to get to the Shulchan Arach. And we're going to see how he views the Torah and he adopts the whole structure of the Torah. The Torah called the Arba Torim, the four rows. It's supposed to represent the four rows of jewels on the Kohen Gadol's breastplate. And he, he goes through four Siddharim, four Seders of Mishnayos, four orders of Mishnah. And he's going to paskin, he's going to write the halakha of all them. And not six, which is interesting, four, not six, not the whole thing. Interesting subject. And then we're going to see how he views the Torah. He takes the structure of the Torah, and then we're going to get to the Shulchan Aruch soon. And we see how he, like, Paskins all the halakha in the Shulchan Aruch. So he finished the Shulchan Aruch in 1555, and it was published in four parts, interestingly enough. So it's Orachayim, Yoridea, uh, let's see, it's I think Evan, Ezer, and then it's Koshina Mishpat. And then it was published in four parts in 1565, so 10 years later. Let's see, he was Nifter, he was Nifter right here, in 1575, and so it was published. Uh, Published 10 years before he was Nifter, so it's interesting. So he got to see the success of the Shulchan Aruch. He also, we've seen him, we learn Rabbi Yosef Karo, he's the Kasef Mishnah, his commentary on uh, the Rambam. And that was written in Nicopol, published in Venice in 1574 to 1575. And this is the commentary on the Mishnah Torah of Rambam, of Maimonides. So in the introduction, Rabbi Karo writes that his goal was to quote the source of each halakha in the Mishnah Torah and to defend the work from the criticisms of the Ravid. Here we're going to see today, we're going to see, we're going to see the attacks of the Ravid. He wanted to defend against the Ravid, Rabbi uh, Avraham ben David. Okay, the Holy Ravid, the great wars of Torah between uh, Rabbi Yosef Karo and the, and the Ravid. And we'll see the war that begins today. Yeah. Where did the Ravid live? I don't know. I'll have to print out one of these sheets. Yeah, I don't have my rival sheet. Is he Ashkenazi? 
Um, I am not sure. <laughs> I don't know. But this Rav Hashem, I will look it up and we'll have a little background on the Rav. And there's a base Yosef written in the order of the tour and the Shulchan Aruch is also in the order of the tour. Right. So what happened is so the major like the major works of Halakha. So what we're going to see is Rambam had a certain methodology. Like he divides things up in a certain books. So like the first book is called like Mada Knowledge, and he has like Yesodia Torah, the foundations of Torah. The second book, which we learn, is Ahava, Love. It's interesting. So it's Bracha, so the Chavos Lovavos, the Avoda we do to Hashem with our hearts, with our emotions, prayer to feel us. So he puts Brachos and prayer in there, in Ahava. And then there's different ones. So I think he calls like one Korbanos, one's Tahara. I forgot all the names. So I think one's. Mishpat, I want to say, or Shoftim, he calls it. I, I forgot, the, but he takes all, he takes all, and he arranges in his order. So it's not going according to the Parsha, like something like the, the Sefer Achinach, which just takes the Parsha and all the mitzvahs in the Parsha. He divides it according to Parsha. The old, the oldest, the oldest, Agadat Halakha Agadada, things like the Sifri, the Sifra, you know, all, all that, the Mechilta, they're all arranged by Parsha. So now it's interesting. Now we're starting getting a more of arrangement, not on the Torah Shabbat Sav, but the later halakha became their own system. So Rambam had his own system, but Rambam, Rambam was so busy being the personal physician of Salah al-Din, you know, the king, and all the other things he was doing, being in the community, you know, he was the doctor of, you know, the whole, you know, Egyptian, you know, Jewish community. So he didn't write all the sources. So beautiful Rabbi Yosef Karo comes in here and he starts writing in the Kesef Mishnah, he quotes all the sources. Where did Rambam get everything from? He's going to do that to the Torah. Here, the Torah is a lot more, you know, writing a lot more of where things come from. But Rabbi Yosef Kar is going to put even more explanation of every, where everything, you know, all the parts the Torah is talking about, where everything's coming from. And because of that knowledge, and probably by writing the Kesef Mishnah, and by writing the base Yosef, very interesting lesson here. By writing a commentary, and a study aid, it's like kind of like Yeshua bin Nun with Moshe Rabbeinu of Moses. Mm -hmm. By writing a study aid on Rambam and writing a study aid on the Torah, who's the son of the Rosh, then it gave him a vast knowledge of Rambam and, and the Rosh and the Torah. And then, then he, I'm sure he also, of course, learned the riff and the Ran. And then all that knowledge of Halakha, the whole knowledge of Shas Halakha, gave him the, the, the wisdom he needs to write the Shulchan Aruch. So it's a great lesson. Like you become a great student, if you know someone wants to become a great rabbi, you become a great student. You become a great student, then you become a great rabbi. Like Yeshua bin Nun, he was the greatest, you know, greatest student of Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest student of Moses, and then he becomes the leader. You know, he becomes the Gadol of the Lord. So the base Yosef, say the right of base Yosef and the, the, the Shulchan Aruch, they're both in the same order. Right, so he takes the whole the whole structure of the tour. He takes the four, you know, the four parts, like he takes the Orachayim, Yoridea, Ebenezer, you know, and Kosha Mishra. So he takes the four divisions, and then he takes the same numbering system. So it's like Simon, like so this Simon, so we're in Simon right now, we're in Simon Reish Yod Ches, 218. But he takes the whole numbering system of the tour, and the numbering system and division is gonna be exactly the same as Shokan Okay, and and again the 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 tour was written by the Rosh. Yeah. No, so the tour, the tour is the son of the Rosh. The son of the Rosh. Right. Okay. So the tour is Rabbi Yaakov ben Asher, so, and then the Rosh is Rabbi Asher ben Yechiel. Yeah. So he's the son of the Rosh. So we saw yesterday he called him Adoni Avi all the time. He doesn't say just the Rosh says. He says, "My Lord, my Father, Adoni Avi Harosh." You know the Rosh. Uh, yeah. Okay, oh, okay, we're gonna get going. Okay, so let's see. So the first thing that Beis Yosef does, so the first thing is he's gonna quote the Mishnah, and the and the Beis Yosef is gonna say, "Haroa makom shna asu bo nisim liyisrael." So a person sees the place where a miracle is done for the Jewish people. Okay, go on. and now and, and by the way, that's a big point. Where does the Gemara? It's very interesting. We haven't really talked about it. Where does the Gemara get this idea of Rabim versus Yachid? And this is a very interesting idea. What does it mean, Shinasu Bonisim Li Yisrael? Here, let me write this on the board, because this is, this is actually very interesting. We haven't really talked about this yet. We, sh we can see how the Gemara starts to break things down. Right, so this is the Mishnah. Haroe Makom. A 
person sees the place, shinasu, right? Shinasu bo nisim the Yisrael. Now, this right here, this one word right here, is almost everything we're going to be talking about today is off of this one word. And I'm going to show you something very interesting. So, there's different concepts that we've been learning about. It's all off of this one word. What does the Yisrael mean? So, one implication is this is a miracle that happens to the Jewish people and not a miracle that maybe happens for, for other nations in the world. So, that's one concept. So, the one concept is it's a miracle that have miracle for the Jewish people, right? And now, then we get into the whole concept of what does Yisrael mean? And then we get into the whole concept of Rabim and Yafi, which we've been talking about for days now. Because does Yisrael mean just all the Jewish people? Li Yisrael, it happened for Li Yisrael. That's what the Mishnah says. What did Rebbe mean? What did Rebbe Yehuda Nasi mean? Is it all the Jewish people? Or could it happen to Li Yisrael? Because Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, was also called Yisrael. So Yisrael was one person. Or just one Jewish person. Or, as we started to see, or what about a very special person? A Mesuyam, an Adam Mesuyam, a very special Jew known to the whole Jewish people where his miracle not only is it done for just an individual person, it, it affects all the Jewish people. And then, the Yisrael itself, because Yisrael, what does it mean itself? Yisrael means Yaakov. It means someone like Yaakov, or someone like the status of a Yaakov, someone with the status of a Yaakov, who is also called Yisrael, so someone of that great stature. And then, we see it talking, and then this idea leads us, we're talking about, well, it's maybe someone like Daniel. If something happens to Daniel, or so, or, or uh, Saruya, you know, or uh, or Yoav, like Yoav ben Saruya, someone like of that stature, Yoav ben Saruya. So I looked it up in Yerushalmi yesterday, and it seemed like the the idea of Yoav ben Saruya. It didn't mention, I don't think, my Farshi may mention it, but it didn't mention Yoav having a specific miracle done for him per se. But it was the point was it was someone of the stature of a Yoav, who's the general of David Amalek, who's the, in charge of all the armies for King David. He's so someone of that stature. He's an Adam Masuyam. He's a Adam. He's an Adam Masuyam. He's a you know a special person. Do you think they chose him because he wasn't a Navi, he wasn't a Nasi, he wasn't a Gibor or Shofi, but he was prominent? Yeah, I, I'm not sure, right? But he definitely has like the general of all the army. Uh -huh. I, I mean, look at the IDF now. Like you know, the general of the army has a great stature. You know, not, that's even a secular. That's even not, a secular. That like, doesn't statement. make him yeah. seem like yeah. like necessarily a good guy. Yeah, yeah, but he played a pivotal role in keeping David I mean, in charge. I mean, right. So we saw some mistakes he made, but but he also look. He was in charge of the armies of the Jewish people. So he's defeating the enemies of the Jewish people. Now. That's, so that just, that's, he's an example of someone with like an, with a special stature, someone that all the Jewish people know of and he has a high position in the Jewish people. Now, Daniel is an example of someone that offers <coughs> like, himself like, like, like to die out Kiddush Hashem. Someone who, who would die out Kiddush Hashem. So he's an example of that. Someone that offered their life on behalf of the whole Jewish people. So Daniel has that stature, right? So, because it says here, it says, what's interesting, it says, Yoav ben Saruya u Rav, and his friends, who are his friends, all that have this stature. But this is all coming out of the word in the Mishnah, Le Yisrael. What does Le Yisrael mean? For the Jewish people, for sure. Implying this is a miracle that happened to the Jewish people, not, you know, if Hashem does miracles for other nations. And, and here's a fascinating thing. With all the claims of the other nations, right, so... So, so y Yishmael's children, they created their own Torah, right? And they're claiming that now Hashem's rejected us and chose them, right? And Esau's children, they did the same thing. They created, you know, their own Torah. And they're claiming, you know, that Hashem has rejected us and, you know, and chose them. But here's the fascinating thing. What big miracle, <laughs> what big miracle can they ever point to 
in the history, in world history. That was on the stature of like the splitting, you know, the Krius Yamsu for the ten plagues in Egypt, or we talk about the walls of Eureka, or, or the, the, the Evan El Gavish, the, the miraculous hail, you know. I mean, what, what miracles can they point to? They can't. There's no miracles. Where in world history is these great miracles? But here's the bigger, here's the bigger thing. Here's the most amazing idea. The Shekinah of Hashem, who is surrounded by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The Shekinah has never left the Jewish people. The Shekinah, was, the Shekinah was never seen going to Chas Hashem, the Vatican in Rome, and the Shekinah now rests in Rome. No, where's it been? You, you replaced this. You, you're making this bold claim that you've replaced the Jewish people. When has the Shekinah ever gone to the Vatican? It's not. You know, it hasn't been seen for thousands of years in the Vatican. And you destroyed the temple. Give them to, hey, good job, great, okay. But the Shekinah here you. But, we're, but the Shekinahs remain with us. And Yishmael, of all his claims, when, when has the Shekinah ever sat on that lifeless rock in Mecca? It is not. And where are all your big miracles, Yishmael? Where are all your big miracles, Asa? You know? Where is it? Where's all the claims? Where's the claims of the Buddhists and the Hindus and everyone else? Where's the claim? You know, you all claim, but the Shekinah has never rested with you, and we've never seen great miracles done for you on a national level. It's never been seen. Maybe Nister, maybe Nister miracles here and there. But it's never been seen. So all their great claims... But it's Nisi and Yisrael. And just these two words are so powerful, and it shows you the power of the Mishnah, that all our discussion, how much discussion have we had just on Nisi and Yisrael? Okay, let me, uh, can we erase this part? Yeah. 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 Right. We, haven't, we haven't really talked about that, but it's all coming from there. It's all coming out of the Mishnah, all this discussion we're having, just the, 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 you know, the, the, the precise wording that Rebbe Yehuda Nasi has put into the Mishnah and how much of a discussion we're having over it. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to erase this so we can just start diving into the base Yosef. But this is the beginning of the base Yosef and this incredible discussion. So he quotes the Mishnah. Okay, so then we're going to see what he com what's his comment on the Mishnah. We'll see what he says. Okay. All right, so he says, let's see, so read again. So, right, so he writes, he quotes the Mishnah. And then he's going to go on, and the next thing he's going to say is this. He's going to say, Kegon ma'abrosiyam Okay, so he doesn't, so he doesn't give us the whole list again that the Torah said. Now the Torah gives us a whole list. Let me write down. Let me just write this down because this is this is interesting what he does here, and it's a good, it's a good it gives us a good idea of what the base Yosef said. So, so he goes kegon, kegon. Um, Kigon Ma'abros, the crossing, Ma'abros, the crossing of uh, Hayam, of the Kriyas Yam Suf of the Red Sea. And, and he says, Ooh, Ma'abros, Ooh, Ma'abros, um, Hayarden. Right, so I kind of gave you guys the answer on this, but he's going to give us the answer just in case we didn't see it. Right, so let me just. So then, what he tells us. So what the base Yosef tells us is this. And I'm going to write his commentary in a different color so we can see it clearly. But what the base Yosef tells us is this. He tells us. Now the Torah. The Torah goes through the whole list. The Torah goes through the whole list. The Torah goes through the Mabros Yam crossing the Red Sea. Mabros Yarding crossing the Jordan River. Mabros Nakali Arnon the miraculous like canyons coming together to kill the, the, the people that are trying to ambush the Jewish people. The Avni Al Gabish the miraculous hail. Uh, the, 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 the stone that Og, the king of Bashan, wanted to throw on the Jewish people. The stone that Moshe sat upon when he held up his hands in the war of Amalek. The walls of, of Jericho, the walls of the Comos Eureka. And then he tells us the bracha. Now what the Beis Yosef tells us is this. The Beis Yosef goes on and he says this. He says, Baraisa, so he's telling us the Torah got it from the Baraisa, right, Biperek, Biperek Haroah. And then either him or the editor is going to give us the nice notes on this, and they're going to say that this is on Daf Nundalit, page 54, Ahmed Aleph, 54a, right? So that's on 54a there. And that's the end of the, the, base, the base Yosef on the Mishnah. And this is telling us, right, it's in Brachos. But what he did, what he did is he told us he's giving us commentary on the Torah. So if we just read that whole list in the Torah 
of all the miracles, we didn't know where the Torah got it from. And he's telling us, and the, and the Beis Yosef is telling us, no, he, the Torah got it from the Paraisa in the Gomorrah. Okay, so it's a simple commentary there, but it's very helpful. Okay, so then that's his, that's his um, commentary on the mission. So the next step, let's see what he says. Next step, he's going to say, Umashkasav Rabbeinu. Now, who is Rabbeinu? We always have to know who Rabbeinu is. So who's Rabbeinu? Who's, who's the Beis Yosef referring to? The Torah, right. So whoever they're commenting on, they're going to call Rabbeinu. We're going to see this again and again and again. And that's why it's good sometimes to know. That's why we're doing like who's the rabbis, who's their teacher. But, but they're just simple. Just whoever they're making the commentary on. I don't know if, I don't think Rabbi Yosef Karo ever maybe learned, I don't know if he ever learned in person from the Torah. I don't, I, I don't think he learned in person from the Rambam, but, but it's like, it doesn't matter. Like if he's studying their Torah and he's making a comment on their Rabbeinu. So Rabbeinu here, who, who's, you know, who's the Rabbeinu? Rabbeinu is the Torah, whoever he's making a comment on. Who's the Rabbeinu to the Baal Tosavos? Rashi. So when the, when the, the Tosavos says Rashi, I mean, say Rabbeinu, it's Rashi. You know, the Kesef Mishnah says Rabbeinu, on, on the Rambam's Mishnah Torah, Rabbeinu is, you know, so it's just a simple, sometimes they, oh, who's Rabbeinu? No, but we, we, whoever they're commenting on is Rabbeinu. Okay, so then he's going to go on. So he's going to say Rabbeinu. So he's going to say, the Torah, the Torah said this. The Torah said, V'kol b'kol abrakos, sarik l'chiz kir behem shem umalkos. All right, this is going to light off a firestorm from our friend, the Ravid. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll write this part down. So he's going to say, so he's going to say this. So he's going to say, U, and we'll, 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 U, Mem, Shin. And that's going to stand for um, Uma, Uman Shikasav, or Ma Shikasav. What was written, he's going to say Rabbeinu, and we'll define everything, Rabbeinu, which is going to be the Torah. And then he's going to say, what did he say? What did the Torah say? The Torah said, Vachain, Bechol, and this is very big, but, and the Torah goes through special lengths to say this, Bechol Habrachos. And so, with every, with every blessing, with every brachos, and he's going to quote Rabbi Zeira here, he says, Sarik, it needs, like he's not here, it needs to mention, like he, like he's here, it needs to mention, the hem, in them, Shame, name, umakus. Okay, we're going to see why he goes to great lengths to explain this. Okay, there it is. So there's his statement. So that's the statement we're going to learn about. Okay, so just a quick, um, let's just clear, let's just put a quick uh, translation on the board. Aroa, a person sees, a person sees a place that. Right, that was done. That was done in it. A miracle. When we talk about the significance of this for the Jewish people, the Yisrael, for the Jewish people. Kagon, for example. <coughs> right, he just gives two out of the list. So this is this is the uh, the parting of the Red Sea. So it's the crossing, the Mahabharas crossing of the Red Sea, and then it's the crossing of the Jordan River, right? Jordan River, and then it says uh, Bakulo, and this just means etc. He's telling you he didn't quote all of the miracles. So here he's letting us know, right? It's from a Baraisa. It's from a Baraisa in the, the chapter that we're learning, the chapter of Haroa. So this is in the ninth chapter of Brachos, our chapter, our parak, And it's here, it's Brachos 54. Okay, so then he goes on. So he says, Uma Shikasav. So it's Uma Shikasav. There's no easy method. There's no easy method with these Roche tables. It's just going over them again and again and again, and then just learning them. And then when we see them, we'll know what it is. I mean, there's not, I mean, we can look it up. I mean, there's great, the great, you know, learning, you know, there's great books that teach us how to learn Gemara, and they'll usually have a list, the Roshi tables, they're very helpful. 
But there's no secret method. It's just going through it again and again and again, and then you start to just learn them. And different and different mechaber would use different rashi. So they generally, everyone generally, everyone generally uses the same right rashi toes. They keep it pretty consistent. Everyone's generally using the same. They're on the same page. But it gets tricky. It gets tricky because this is in the level of drash of learning Mishnah and Gemara, the Talmud. When you get up to learning the level of Sod, all of a sudden the Roshi tables can change. So here, like, so here, if you see Aleph, you know, uh, you know what's that called again? I forgot the, yeah, you know, the, quote, the quote mark. Gershon. Right. <laughs> That's the right, so if you see like you know the quote mark and then the other letter, so if you see like Aleph Aleph in the level of Gemara, it's going to stand for E F Shar. It's impossible. But if you see Aleph Aleph when you're learning Sod, if you're learning like Zohar or like you know Sefer like Eitz Chaim, Aleph Aleph is going to become Eric Ankin. Is what? Eric Ankin. Right, we're not going to get into it right now, but I'm saying, I'm saying, unfortunately, sometimes we're going to have to learn two sets of Roshe Tevos like for different levels of Torah. Okay. Right. But generally, from Peshat in the Gemara, so a Rashi commentary on Peshat, generally Midrashim, all the way up to the level of Drash, there seems to be a system that everyone's kind of adopted, and the Roshi tables seem pretty consistent. So it's really just, once you learn them, you'll see it, you'll see it all over, and they're the same. But I'm, is, is, I'm just giving a warning, in the level of so they do change. Like they, uh, okay. okay, so... That's next, that's next, uh, next, yeah, next break. <laughs> so then... All right, so then Rabbeinu, and we talked about Rabbeinu's the Torah here, right? Rabbeinu's the Torah, and he says, and so, and so, Bethain, and so, with all, with, with all, or every, let's say with every bracha, with every blessing, right? With every bracha, it needs, right? It needs to mention, needs to mention, Lachis, Lachis here, needs to mention in it, so the form of it needs to mention name. So the name of Hashem needs the name of Hashem and mention Hashem's kingship. So right, the standard formula is Baruch Atah Hashem using the name of Hashem Hashem. And it's an interesting discussion. I think I'm trying to think. I just saw this recently. I have to, to, to look it up again. Getting to the discussion of can you use other names of Hashem? I think it, Yerushalmi deals with that some. Or what happens if you start with one name and go to another name? Which is interesting. Okay, and then kingship is generally Elokeinu, our God, but Melech HaOlam. He's our God, and he's the king of the universe. That's Hashem's kingship. Okay, so he's making a bold statement. So we just saw, we just saw in the Torah itself, the Torah said something. The Torah said, the Torah said this. He said, So the Torah mentioned this. And so, Every bracha needs to mention in it name and malchut. So that's the teaching of Rabbi Zeira, Rabbi Yehuda from Yerushalmi, from the Jerusalem Talmud. And then the Torah says this. The Torah says, V'chein kasav Rambam, and so writes the Rambam. So the Rambam really wrote this first. The Rambam wrote this. Why did the Rambam write it? So the Torah is telling us, why did the Rambam write it? Le'afuke medivre haraivet. The Rambam wrote it to exclude what the words of the Ravid, right? Because the Ravid said that this type of bracha that we're dealing with here, a bracha Lisa Parakim, that you don't say, you know, you need to wait 30 days to say it again, that type of bracha, according to the Ravid, doesn't name Shema Malchus. Okay, so now we got a firestorm. Rambam was disagreeing with the Ravid, so the Rambam wrote this. The Torah quotes this and lets us know that the Rambam wrote that because of the Ravid. And now, the Beis Yosef is going to start explaining why the Rambam wrote this, and why the Torah mentioned it, and we're going to take the discussion from there. Okay, so that's... I wish I had more board space for this, but we'll just do the best we can. Okay, let's see how we're doing on time. We've got some time here, so let's get into it a little further. Okay, so the next step is, he's now going to comment, and he's going to say, Hainu lomar de'afilu bebrachos ha're'iya. So you say that this is saying that even with a bracha of re'iya, a bracha of vision, it needs shame and mahu. So, so I'm, we're going to just do a summary form. We're not going to, we're going to start just writing summary form. But, but what he's saying is, so he's saying like a bracha of re'iya, 
Right, so the point is this, a bracha re'iya, right, and we'll talk about what that is, a bracha, a brachos, brachos re'iya, that they, that they need, that they, they, they still need, they still need uh, both shame and malchus, right? They need to have shame and malchus for them to be a valid bracha. So every bracha needs that. Yeah, there's no other, there's no such thing. The wrong I'm saying there's no such thing as any bracha that doesn't need these two components. Okay, and the difference is, the difference being, go write down the definition, the difference being that it's a blessing, it's a bracha of vision. It's a bracha, it's a blessing of vision. And it's a really interesting tasa because like, okay, so let's, what does that mean? So, What's the distinction? So this morning, you know, when we make the, the bracha on, 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 the, on the talus or the, the tzitzit katan or the tefillin, like we make the bracha at Hashem and Malchus. But we're actually physically doing something. We're physically like putting it on. Like we're physically putting it on. We're wearing it. It's touching us. We're interacting with it. Okay, so it's more, we're more involvement with it. When, we, you know, we have breakfast, we make the bracha, you know, on, on the food. You know, we're getting, we're, you know, the, it's giving us life. We're, we're, we're getting benefit of the taste. It tastes delicious. It's going into us. It, you know, it, it's giving us sustenance. So, yeah, that's, that's a bracha. Now, it's interesting. Right? So, the vibe is kind of making a point that, like, just seeing something, there's an interesting idea. Just seeing something, and, and we're having two reactions to it. He's going to say we're having shvach and hoda. So when we see this place where a miracle happened, we have two reactions. So according to the Ravid, we're having the reaction of what we're really just doing is we're praising Hashem and we're thanking Hashem. But we're not, I don't know, it's strange. Like, like it's here, it's like the miracle didn't even happen to us. <laughs> like the miracle didn't even happen to us. Like it's one thing, like, you know, it's like, so what, what's, what, what, what would we have to do if the miracle happened, happened to us? If we were at the Kriyas Yamsuf, and Shem miraculously saved us from the Egyptians who were chasing after us, we have to say Halil. Like, we have to do something big. Like, this is not enough. Can't just say one bracha. No, no, we have to do something even bigger. If the miracle actually happens to us, we have to do Halil. We have to do something bigger. And, you know, in the famous Midrash, the Yigadada, that Chizkiyaku HaMelech, King Chizkiyaku, I don't know, it's Hez, Hezki, Hezkiah, Hezekiah? It sounds weirder sometimes in English. Hezekiah, oh, it, should, it should sound weird in English, but like he could have become a Shiach. Because Hashem did this miraculous thing that he just, he couldn't take it anymore. He prayed to Hashem for help against this Assyrian army, I think it was. And he just went to sleep. And the next morning they wake up and they find the whole Assyrian army has been wiped out. It would be like now. It would be like now, if you can imagine. Like, like I ran, I don't know what Iran's doing anymore. They're, they're so confusing. Oh, we're going to attack on Tisha, but we're not going to attack. We're going to make you wait. We're going to wait until you're not ready. You know, but now, you know, so, but let's say, like, you know, Iran really, like, they, 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 like, they say, uh, I don't know, they say, tomorrow we're attacking, you know, we're concert shaman, we're attacking on this Shabbos. And it's all out, all out war. And, like, and we just, like, oh, my gosh, like, especially the Jews living in like, we can't take anymore. Like, they're just going to dive into Hashem, you know, dive into Hashem for help, and they can't take it, they just go to bed. They wake up the next morning, or at Mosi Shabbos, and what does all the news say? Iran's underwater. Yeah, Iran, it's just, you know, it's some, something miraculous happened, and Iran just completely, right, let's say they just got flooded out, and who knows, hail from the skies with fire inside, just all kinds of miraculous stuff happening. Now you got to do something. <coughs> now you were safe. Keskiyaku <coughs> Amalek, he could have become a shield if he just said Halil. When, he, when Hashem did something miraculous on a big scale, we have to thank Hashem in a big way with two Halil. So here, what the rabbit, I think the rabbit's point is, it's, it's strange. It's like, it's not even like the, the miracle didn't happen to us. Now, we wouldn't be here if the miracle of the Kriyas Yamsu didn't happen. We wouldn't even be here. The Egyptians, Christ of Shah, Christ of Shah, would have killed all the Jews. That would have been it. No more Jewish people. Done. But we're here because of that miracle. So we have, we have, we have to praise Hashem. We have to do Shavach. And we have to have Hoda. We have to thank Hashem. But it's interesting. It didn't personally happen to us. And we're just seeing the place where it happened, and the Ravid saying, no, this is less. But, but no, Rambam and everyone else is going to start to pile on, and the Ravid said, nope. Every bracha, every bracha, even if you want to make this whole separate category, 
of this bracha re'iya, bracha of vision, just seeing something? Nope. They all need shame and malchus. So what the Beis Yosef is saying, is he saying, what's Rambam talking about? What's the Torah talking about? Nope. Every bracha needs shame and malchus. There's no such thing as any bracha that doesn't need it. So that's... So how is the Ravid say that bracha? So that's what we're going to have to see. So we're going to have to see what's the mach locus here. Why is the Ravid saying is different? Like why... What's the Ravid saying? So then he's going to say this. He's going to explain the Ravid. He's going to say this is to, and he's writing this to, is to exclude, exclude the words of the Ravid, right? It's to exclude the words of the Ravid. And we're going to see that a lot of people do not agree with what the Ravid was saying. It's the Ravid, right? Okay. So a lot of people don't agree with what he was saying. Okay, so he's saying, now this is what he thought. He says, he says that the, uh, so he says, he, she's so there, okay, you know what, maybe we'll just write this, I'll write this part out, and then, then we'll go through this, and then we'll take a break after this, but we'll just go through this completely, like, okay, so we'll say this, so we'll say, she, this is what the rabbit hood, she's so there, this is what the Ravid held. He held Shesover um, de Af. Right, once again, our, our famous Roshay Tevas are back. Sha'af al Gav, that even though did um, be Sha'ar with the rest, be Sha'ar Brachos, with the rest of the Brachos, be Inan, we need, right, we need shame. We need to write the name Wamakus. We need Shane Wamakus. So that's what the writer is saying. Why do we need that? So this is but so that's what the rest of the product is. But be be brachos be brachos um hara'iya, right? This different category of a vision, a bracha of vision, where we just see the place, this requires something else. So a bracha of Ra'iya, Kavan, since Kavan since She'enam, she'enam, they're only, Ella, so it's ain Ella, they're only Shavach, they're only praise, the Hoda, that's all they are. Since they're only these two things, now I don't know why this is less, I mean, we have to look into the Raiva, or we have to understand why he said it's less, but since it's only that, the Hama in general, since the, the, the bracha vision is only this, it's only praise and thanks. Ain Sariko Shema Makus. Then he writes this interesting statement. So then it doesn't need, it doesn't need um, Shema Makus. I, I don't know. It's uh, no one else, you know, everyone's going to jump on the Ravid for this, but the Ravid sees somewhere that he's getting this from. The Ravid's getting this from somewhere, and We'll have to try to understand where the rivet is getting from. So, okay, so let's define everything here. So, so he's saying, so Shisavor, like he hold, he holds, he thinks. Svara, let's talk about Svara real quick. Rabbi Hyman said something really interesting. I, I, was, I was going to a shear, and he was giving a shear on uh, Nefesh Akayim. We were going through Nefesh Akayim. And every page on, on the Sefer Nefesh Akayim, by Rabbi Chaim Veloshin, he writes a little bit, and then there's like all these footnotes of like, you know, or then he's writing, the, the Rabbi Veloshin's writing like, he writes a, he writes a little bit, and he writes, it came from this safer, this safer, this safer, this safer, this safer. This safer. So Rabbi Chaim comments, like, why is Rabbi Chaim Veloshin doing all this? You know, why is he, he writes a little bit, and then he's writing this, 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 came from here, 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 it came from this statement, here, it came from there, here, 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 he's showing all these places in the Torah it came from. So, Rabbi Heinemann taught a very amazing lesson. He said, Savara, 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 <laughs> Savara, Savara, can I hold this? Torah, Torah. This is a very interesting concept. So he says, why is Rabbi Chaim Velozhin doing all this? So he said, Svara is logic. It's reasoning. It's what we think. We can come up with a logical reason. We come out with a quote unquote, what's svara? I'll give you a great word for what svara is. Savara is a theory. Savara 
is someone's theory, right? Someone's thinking, their own intellect. Aristotle, the Greeks, their theory. These people were very intelligent, very smart. What can man think about? You can think about quite a lot. Sometimes these theories can be correct. Sometimes these theories can be proven. Right? So you can have theories like, you know, Einstein can say crazy things like acceleration mimics gravity. And everyone's like, ah. Then you start testing it. And what, what's all the effects, you know, all these you know, general relativity, special relativity. You start saying crazy things like the closer you get to the speed of light, like time can start to slow down and stretch and have time. To, it sounds crazy, but if the experiment and the scientific method, if the experiment starts to prove it, then that theory can be the evidence. It could be true. We have to prove it. Now, then you can have crazy theories. You can have the magical monkey theory, like, you know, where, where Darwin goes, magically monkeys over some crazy period of time magically transform to people. Now, if you check the actual fossil record, it completely disproves it. So they talk about the missing link. Oh, there's no, there's no one, you know, one skeleton that's like in between like the monkey skeleton and the human skeleton. Well, let me tell you, there's not one missing link. There's millions of missing links. There's tens of millions of missing links. There's hundreds of millions of missing links. Because if this happened over this vast period of time, there should be all these millions and millions of in-between skeletons, and there's none. They can't even find one missing link. So there, Spar. Maybe he was basing it on good ideas. I don't know his intentions, you know, but but that Spar is not true. So not all Spar is, not all theories are equal, you know? So even the greatest person, the most intelligent person, can come up with a theory. Aristotle was probably one of the most intelligent people that ever lived. But it was just a spara. It was just his own theory. So when he came up with a theory of very logical assumptions and reasons why he thought the universe always existed, and it always exists, but it's wrong. So even now modern science, even though that Aristotle is like the father of all science and starts all the categories of science, now, you get into the 1960s, they find a microwave background to the universe, and like his theory's gone. No, his spar is no good. Now we got the Big Bang Theory. Is the Big Bang Theory totally right? It's probably not totally right either, but it's getting closer to, you know, Torah, Torah. So, spar is spar. So, even the most intelligent person in the world, if they come up with their own reasoning, their own logic, it can be very well founded and put together, but it's just their theory. But only when it's Torah, only when we're getting the idea from the infinite, infinite being that's created the, you know, the whole universe, only when we get the words of Hashem, the Divrei Hashem, then we know it's Emma's. Then we can know it's perfectly true. So what Rabbi Chaim Velozhin was doing in, in Sefer Nefesh Hakayim is he wasn't, he, he's saying, like, I'm not just saying something. I'm not just saying it. This is Torah. This is not my Svara. This is not my, you know, my idea. Right? It's not my idea. Like, here's all the places in the Torah I got it from. Like, I'm not just quoting it, I'm not just making it up. Okay, so, we're going to see a lot of times in the Rishonim, Akronim, they're going to say that someone has Svara. But, what does it mean? It's a, li a little bit, a little bit consulting in a way. <laughs> like, he say, no, this is just this Shisover to, you know, Derive it. I don't think I wrote that wrong. I think I missed the word there. Derive it. You looked at the Rish. I looked at the Rish. I did the dive it. No, but he's the Rivet. And, and, and the Rivet's a great reshown also. But in this case, what's interesting, what the base Yosef is saying, it's very interesting. He's saying, this is what the Rivet thinks. This is not necessarily Torah. This is the Rivet's idea. But this is just Sparta. This far, if the rivet doesn't have a source, or he doesn't, to, what are we talking about all the time when we're learning Mishnayos? What's the strongest proof that the Gemara can bring? We want a Pusik from the Chumash. We want a Pusik from the Torah of Exod. That's strong proof. I've been, I've been challenging my physics class for three years now. I don't know the answer. Where's the Pusik that says the Earth is a sphere? Okay, look, I mean, it says in the Zohar, it's a Gador, the earth is a Gador, it's a ball, it's a sphere. I mean, the, the, the Rambam in Yisodia Torah calls it a Galgalin, these are the planets, the stars, they're all spheres. But, but somewhere in there, somewhere in the Torah, is a Pusik that says it's a sphere. Yeah, so I'm challenging everyone. You see the sun, but yeah. it comes back. That's that. Could, so right. So that could, I mean, so right. So the, you know, I don't want to get too off topic on that, but that's my story. But, 
But yeah, it's far, but it's good. But there's going to be a pasuk in there that's going to say it's a sphere. So then, then one of my students, they, they, what, two years ago, they were pushing the whole flat earth thing. You know, they loved arguing the flat earth. So they're like, no, what the Torah says is a pasuk, and it says, it, you know, it says like, the, uh, the earth has ends. Like it has ends, oh, like, yeah. like a seed seed. It has ends, it's like the ends of the earth, the ends of the earth, you know, it's the four corners of the earth, so it's like a piece of paper's four corners, so it's flat. I say, okay, but what word does it actually use? And they say, ah, confe aris. Ah, what's confe really mean? They say, oh, it's wings. I said, yeah, but what does a bird do? The bird wraps its wings around himself into a circle. And they're like, ah. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, so maybe that, maybe that one, maybe it's that possibly itself. I don't know, but okay. But so what, so what, so important is the base you saying, no, this is far, this is far of the rabbi, of the rabbi, this is what the rabbi thinks. He thinks that with the rest, right, with the rest of the brachas, with the rest of the blessings, Right? The rest of the blessings, meaning every other blessing except our type of blessing that we're doing now, they need, they need shame, they need the name of Hashem, and they need to mention kingship. But the Ravid, now according now what now the Ravid may Ravid may say something else. The Ravid may not say this is far. The Ravid may have a source for where he's getting this from. But the base Yosef is saying that this is just a svara of now look, we see this, the Amorayim talk about this. We talk about this all the time right in the Gemara. It's Svar of this, Svar of this rabbi, Svar of that rabbi. So what we need is Torah. We need proof. We need, Svar is no good. We either need a Pasuk from the Chumash, we need, we need at least an Asmachta, we, we need an, at least a Pasuk from the Tanakh, <laughs> or we will accept the Halakha of Moshe Misenai. If Hashem personally told Moshe and Moshe passed it down, a lot of emotion we've seen, I probably just as strong. I don't know. I don't know how they're. I still don't know how they're weighed. I have to find someone who talks about that. It'll be interesting. But now, but now, but with the blessing of vision, but this is what the Ravid says. But with a blessing of vision, blessing of vision, no way. The Ravid says his svara is no, no. Since now, this is very interesting. Since a blessing of vision is only an ain ella, ain. Ella always means only when we see an ain Ella. Sometimes they're separated by a couple words. It's very confusing. I don't know why, I don't know why, you know, Lashon Kosh does these interesting things. The double negative becomes a positive, right? The, the, the no rather, no but, double negative becomes a positive. You know, two rights don't make a wrong, but two rights make an airplane. You know, so it's like, okay, so the ain Ella only, <laughs> And, and because this type of rug is only shvach, it's only praise, it's only praise, according to the Ravid, and hoda, and thanks. And it's strange. Just, I guess we don't need to mention, the Ravid saying, we don't need to mention Hashem's name or his kingship if we're just praising and thanking Hashem. I don't know, it's a strange concept, but that's like in general. So <coughs> Be'alma literally means in the world, like in general, in general, right? Be'alma, in general. It's just thanks and praise. It's just shvach and hoda. And then, no, it doesn't need. It doesn't need. Very strange. Doesn't need shame or malchus. It doesn't need the name. And that's the right. Now we're going to see, when we get back from the break, we're going to see everybody else pounce on the right. <laughs> this is the right of Svara. And we're going to see everyone else go, no way. <laughs> we're not playing your game. No, <laughs> you know we're not. We're not doing. It. Is the rivet here? The rivet is. The rivet is on the riff. No, he's not on the page here. Not we saw him on the riff. On the bottom of the riff, those commentary on the riff, and that's where everyone's talking about. On the commentary of the riff at the bottom. So we could go back through. We could go back okay. through that and see the actual rivet. But that's where it's coming. I, I could bring. I could bring the rivet in he's, he's from the other room. Here. We have it in the other room. The big one. Here, let me, you, you brought the rivet. Let, let, let me bring Yeah, let me pause this and I'll, here, I'll, let me pause and I'll bring it in. All right, so we're coming, we're coming back to the war against the rivet. So now, it's not going to be a fair fight, as we mentioned before, right? So the rivet, the rivet lived, right? Look, the rivet lived, what we said before, the Rambam. So the rivet, the rivet lived, lived 1125 to yeah. 1198. And when was the rivet? Right. And, and the Rambam was 1194. Okay. To twelve seventy. Right, so it's not a fair fight. So the rivet doesn't. You know, so maybe maybe we can figure out. Maybe we can defend the rivet. They, they, they only overlap by four years. But yeah, they missed it by four years, right? That doesn't. But the rivet wrote comments on the Rambam, so that doesn't jive. 
No, the wait, the Rivid no, the Rivid wrote commentary on the riff. That's who wrote on the Rambam. On the Rambam? Okay, so let's yeah, take a so look. There's, it's both. Oh, it's two? It's, they, two. it's Hasago, Hasagos Haribid. Hasaga means like oh, okay. Like, okay. Uh, a response okay. Okay. on okay. someone. So okay. he wrote Hasagos Haribid okay. on the Rambam. Okay. Responses on the Rambam. Okay. Places where he felt. Do you know? Do you happen to know who that him? is, or? It's the same Rivet. Oh, wait. So wait. So the same but, person. Wait, the Rivet himself? Yeah. So, but I thought he was um, he was before the Rambam. Just in the Rambam, Rambam before, he passed he away, and the Rambam was born. Oh, so he was a I couple don't think that's correct. The Rivet wrote as an old man commentaries on where he thought the Rambam was wrong. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he okay. definitely okay. he definitely wrote on the Rambam. Okay, so, so the Hashkachos yeah. ha arrive at is the Rambam. Hasagos. Hasagos. Okay. Yeah. He only did okay. four years while the Rambam. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I missed you. Something. You got that from Wikipedia? I right, said so the right. So Hashem gave the arrive uh, the ability to defend himself. He gave him time to defend himself. Yeah, they said he wrote on the as well. Okay. Hasagos. Right. Okay. okay. All right, nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, let. Um, are we are we in agreement that the arrive was before the Rambam or not? Yeah. He was a, yeah. Yes, but he yeah. didn't die. He definitely. But I think he had a few years. years. He had a few yeah. years. He, so he read the Rambam. Yeah. He read. He the read, Rambam was just born. Right now, no, so he, that's incorrect. No, I think we had the dates, and we we had to check the dates. But it seems like he had, or or one of his students, or possibly one of his students wrote on. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh, so I want to research it more. Like, yeah, I guess we'll, yeah. we'll leave it as a Sarik unit. It needs needs to be looked into, but it's, it's interesting. Research. We we we're, we're stirring sure. we're stirring the pot. Thank you. Thank you, Turner. Kali of Turin. Turner? Turin, T-U-R-I-N. Okay, yeah, excellent. Yeah, okay. sure. Now you're really good. Okay, so then, so now we're gonna see the power on. Okay, so so the first thing the base Yosef is gonna do, he's gonna he's gonna bring Tosfos. So now we're going against the opinion of Rivet. So he's gonna say Tosfos. So this Roshi Tevos is Divre Hamaskil. And we're gonna see this one a lot. So this means Divre Hamaskil. Oh gosh, how do you spell Hamaskil? Hamas. I'm just gonna think it's like this. What it what it means is it's like chapter heading. I don't know exactly what this means. Um, could be with a could be with a cuff. I'm not sure. A mosque, it could be probably with a cuff. I mean, because it's probably related to seicho. It's probably related to seicho. I don't know exactly the literal. I can tell you the meaning of it. I have to look up exactly the literal meaning of it. It's probably like that. Mosque. A divrei Moscow is just telling us like the chapter heading. So it's just telling us where to look something up. So divrei Moscow, we'll see it all the time. Like we'll see it all the time in Tosfos. We'll say, we'll say, you know, divrei Hamaskil, where the Tosfos is quoting the Rashi. Or we'll see, we'll see with the Rashi, where the Rashi is quoting the, the Chumash or the Gemara. So it's just, I don't know, I don't know the literal translation of it, but it's like, it's, we're quoting here. We're quoting here. It's like, quote. It's a Moscow with a, uh, like, La Haskil to begin. Yeah. So it's, oh, so, so it's spelled it with a chet. Oh, so you, oh, so you think it's with a it's uh, a, it's a, a chet. A chet. Oh, a chet. Oh, it's a chet. With a sum. With a sum and a chet. Like tequila. Here? So this is a chet? It's a, a sum. Oh, kesav. Oh, kesav. Oh, kesav. Mas kesav. Ah. Okay. K Okay, so it's a maskil to, to begin. Uh, so it's like a quote. It's like the yeah, words. Yeah. Of, it's words of the quote. Like words of the right. The, it's the place that begins with mas. Something like that, maybe. Kasim. Kasav. Uh, okay, I I got to look it up, but I don't want to get too. No, it's mem sav chet lamed. Wait, mem. Okay. Mem. Mem. Sav. So, ches, ches, good lama. Oh, to begin. Right. Oh, mosque. So go to the place that begins words with these begin. words. Oh, this, it begins. Oh, this is the, ah, oh, we finally saw the mystery. <laughs> it's the beginning. These are the words at the beginning. Haroas, so our Mishnah. With the words So Tosfos, and the Tosfos has a divre hamaskil on, on the Mishnah. So there it is. You look it up there. Okay. <laughs> Great. I, I haven't known that for years. Now we figure it out. Okay, so here, here's our friend Rabbeinu Yonah. Right, so this is Tosafos, so he's quoting Tosafos, Tosafos. And here he's quoting, quoting Rabbeinu Yonah. Now what the Beis Yosef is doing here is he's just telling us all the places that we can look up. Now these, these all the places, these, these are shown and we're going to argue on the Sparrow, the, the, the Raivet. So here he's telling us it's on Mem Gimel, 
I'm an olive. So it would be 43a. Now if you notice, that's going to be in a different sugya, right? This is a different sugya. This is not our sugya. Our sugya starts on 54a. So this is a different sugya. So this, this is on our Mishnah. This toast was on our Mishnah. This is a different. I think it's in, it's in Brachos. But it's here. Oh, oh, this could be the daf. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the pages. Dafs. The dafs. Or the, which means pages. The pages of the riff. And then D, our friend D. Ray Hamaskil, the beginning of Amre. So we're going to look in the, we're, when we look in, in the riff, it's going to be on that. It's going to be on Amre. So we look it up as Amre. Now our friend the Rosh. Rosh. And this is either, I forgot if this is Sif or Simon. I think the Simon, the Simon is the main, the main chapter part. So like, for instance, like here in the tour, the Simon is the main chapter heading. All the Hilkos Birkas Hariya, the laws of the blessings of vision, and it's a Simon. And then I think some people, so this could be divided up by Halakha, or then I think these are called a uh, Sif. Like a Sif is a further division of the Simon. I know it's so confusing. People divide it up different ways. So this is um, Sif. I don't know. This is probably Sif. This is probably a Sif. It's just another division, and that's Aleph. Sif Aleph. So here's the Rashba. Right then, we didn't see the Rashba, but here's the Rashba, and then the Mordecai. We also didn't look up the Mordecai, but these are all going to agree with the Rambam. Now what? What up? Uh, so what, why is the base Yosef doing all this? Why is he doing all this? In, when we get to the Shulchan Aruch, the base Yosef, the base Yosef is going to paskin like the Rambam, also like the Rif, and like the Rosh, because they all agree on this. But he's let, the first thing he did is, when, when they kes, in the Kesef Mishnah on the Rambam, he let us know why, why the, when the Torah is mentioning this too, why did the Rambam paskin against the Rivet? So now what the Beis Yosef is doing is, the Beis Yosef is building a case. He's saying, like, on one side, we're going to have everybody, <laughs> like, in a sense, and on the other side, we're going to have the Ravid. So the Ravid doesn't stand a chance on this halakha, right? So this could be Simon. I think this is on Simon. Simon, so it's 208. So it's Reish Gas. And then the pair, in the pair, in the chapter, in our chapter, so this is going to be in our chapter, ninth chapter, Brachos Haroa, right? Our chapter of Mishnah. Now, it's going to say they agree. They, so what's he saying? They agree. They all agree. So he's saying everyone here, Tosfos, Rabbeinu Yonah, Rif, on the Rif, the Rosh, the Rashba, the Mordecai, the Mordechai, they all agree with. The das. Now, now, use, now, now, what does he not use here? It's, it's also interesting language, right? Language is important. He doesn't use svara. He used svara, right? He used lisvor, you know, svara for the rivet. But here he uses das, the knowledge. According to the knowledge, language is important. The knowledge of the Rambam. He's validating the Rambam. So he's validating the opinion of Rambam. But he's not just, but, but, but it's fast, but also look very carefully what he's doing. It's not just like, oh, I like Rambam better. You know, like, you know, like I don't, I don't respect the Ravid also. But in terms of the Sakhalaka, we need to be very strong. We need to have as much clarity as we possibly can. So he's lining up his, this is like his case, his evidence. Because he's going, we're going to see in the Shulchan Aruch, which way do you think he's going to go? <laughs> you know, he's going like the Rambam, right? It's not even, it's not even a mystery. He's going to go like the Rambam. may not always be so clear, but he's lining up the case. And he's saying it's the Das, the Rambam, against what he's calling, in a sense, the Svara of the Ravid. But he's saying, we got, we got Tosafos, we got Rabbeinu Yonah, on the Rif, we got the Rosh, Rashba, Mordecai, all agree that the Das of the Rambam, that, a bracha, a blessing, a blessing of vision. Also, it also, it also needs, so like Rebbe Zeyra said, Rebbe Zeyra said, all brachos, Rebbe Zeyra and Yerushalmi, all brachos need shame on Malchus, but it also needs, it also needs shame, it needs the name of Hashem, 
and it needs to mention the kingship of Hashem. It's not just enough. So the Rav is saying that even though it's just Shvach and Hoda, because what are we really doing? We come to the place, we see all oh, the great miracle happened, the splitting of the Red Sea. We want to praise Hashem, we want to thank Hashem. We don't need Shema Malchus. No. The basic is saying, no, all these are shown him. All these are shown him. Agree of Rambam that even the bracha, even if it's a birkos haria, it needs shame and malchus. But what is he doing, though? What's he doing? What's he doing? Establishing a basis. What's he doing? But but no one's disagreeing. This is very interesting. No one's disagreeing with the rivet that there is something different about this kind of bracha. This kind of bracha is different. He has a degree. They're not. Well, listen, where they're not disagreeing. They're not disagreeing in the sense that. The Rav is saying that this is a different type of bracha. There's different categories of brachos. Because if I, when, I, when, I, when I got up this morning and I did the Birka Sashakar, I do it every morning. A shake it is shana, it was yeah, I do it every morning. I say Shema Mahfuz. But, but I didn't go to a place today and saw where a miracle happened. And even if I went to a place today where I saw a miracle happen, there's a concept of parakim that I have to wait another 30 days to do it again. Yeah, let's say we went on vacation. We went to the place where the, the you know the Red Sea. We knew where the Red Sea was going. We can't get up every day on our vacation and make a bracha. So there is something different. There is a different category. There is a different category of brachas of re'iyah. These these have these have a limitation of paraki. These have so there is so they're what they're not denying that the rivet said is they're not denying that this could be a separate category. There's things about this type of bracha that's different. One thing being different is the concept of prakim that you have to wait another 30 days to make it. Why? But doesn't everybody agree with that? Everyone, so that's what I'm saying. Everyone agrees that this is, to, so even the base Yosef is agreeing with the Ravid and calling these things Bir Kasra These are blessings or uh, but, vision. They have different rules. There's different but rules. But the 30-day concept, yeah. everybody agrees with that. Well, we'll see. Because the 30-day concept in the Mishnah is really only on if we see the Yam HaGadol. That's where the Mishnah mentions it. The Tosafos bring in for the first time, Tosafos bring in for the first time that, um, that there's this concept of Prakim and it applies to all these brachas in the Mishnah. Not just if we see the Mediterranean Sea. But the Mishnah itself, you know, Rebbe, Rebbe Yehuda Nasi, he only mentions it with with the one bracha of you know making a bracha on the yams on the you know on the, on the uh, yam hagadol on the Mediterranean. So then Tosvos brings in the concept of no paraki may apply to different categories. It may apply to all of the brachas riyah maybe, right? So we got a lot of things going on in here, right? We got a lot of things going on. No, one second. Okay, 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 okay. okay. You got the splitting of the Red Sea, for example, right? right? right. You got the Mishnah. It says you need Shem and Mach. Yes. And then you have <coughs> Rivet, yeah. Rambam, and Yosef Karo. Yeah. <coughs> Yosef Karo is, 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 is he, his betting is most of the guys are with me anyway. I'm saying you have to have Shem and Mach. Right. So he, yeah. He's covered. His right. base he's covered. Is he's covered. 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 Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the, 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 the only question we're talking about is the writers and the Rambam. No, but what, but what I'm saying is that, that, that Rabbi Yosef Karo... He's covered. That, but he does agree that there is something special about this category. That Bir Kasariya, there are some rules that people are going to agree, there are different rules. Now what most people are not agreeing is, they're not agreeing that you don't need Shem and Malchus for this bracha. But there are different rules. A lot of people are going to agree with right. that. There's, 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 the rab, yeah. there's, there's the writer that says you don't need it, right? Right. Right. So, so there's, there's, there are people who say right. so, so, so here's the, here's, so what's, okay, so what's, what's the right, what's driving the right? Like, we don't want to do a bracha levatala. We don't want to use that. Like, that's one of the big ten, ten commandments, you know, you know, Debros, right? Don't use Hashem's name in vain. There's right. only certain times we have permission to use Hashem's name. Right. So, so that, so if we don't have permission on well, this type of bracha, the Yushem and Malchus, <clears throat> we don't want to use Hashem's name. We don't want to make a bracha levatal. Right. So that's another reason why, because of that, 
we got to know really well. <laughs> you know, we've got to be really sure if, you know, if he's going to poskin that, you know, people can use shame and mafus with this type of bracha, we want to make very sure that it's not a bracha levitala. So that's why he's bringing in the big guns. And like, you know, he's covering his bases, as he said. We want to cover our bases, because if we're going to, you know, make a, you know, if we're going to poskin halakha, that we can use shame and mafus, especially the shame of Hashem, we don't always have permission to use the shame of Hashem. We have to make very sure, you know, that we have permission you know, during that bracha to use the shame of Hashem. Does the rivet say no? According to, meaning, according to the rivet that you don't need it, does he say you can't do it if you don't want to? Or he's just saying you're yodzei without it? And I always say that the rivet says no. Right. That's you don't point. say Shem and Malchut? Yes, but the question is, does right. he mean... Right, is can't? he right? Or do you mean yeah, you don't does, have he to? says you don't have to, right? So, do you not have to? That's see, this good. is where this is where Acharonim are going to see. This is a great example of it. This is where Acharonim are going to be very important because they're going to they're going to even paint the picture even they're going to they're going to paint the picture even bigger because right is is the rabbi just saying you don't have to I or don't, I don't or, or, or is he don't saying or is he saying you can't or is he saying you can't it'll be a bracha levatala you can't. I don't understand what you yeah. mean by you don't have to. Okay, you, not, don't, you don't have to means like, like if, if, let's say we just say Baruch, you know, Sha'asa, you know, Sha'asa Lavoseinu, you know, Sha'asa Nes, you know, Lavoseinu. Like Hashem, Baruch, Baruch is Hashem. Baruch, you know, Baruch, or we can say, you know, Baruch Rabbonu Shalom, Baruch Abisher, Baruch is the Abisher, but we don't say one of the shames of Hashem. We don't take anything there. Because that's what Rabbi Zaira is saying. Rabbi is saying it's not a bracha. <laughs> Rabbi Zaira is saying if you want a bracha, you use shame and malchus. Right. That's a bracha. Right. The rive is coming in and saying this special category you don't need shame and malchus. So you're saying you don't need to make a bracha for a re'ia? So for a bracha re'ia, you don't need shame and malchus. Who's saying that? The rive. The, 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 right, right, right. The rive. the rive is saying you don't need it. Yeah. The Rambam said you do need it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then the yes, so Carlos says, since the Rambam says you need it, and these other big guns yeah. say you need it, yeah. therefore the halacha is you need right, it. So we're going to see on Shulchan Aruch, we'll see how he poskins, but it, it seems pretty clear that he's going to poskin. Yeah, yeah. going to need it. It's, it's no. a no brain. No, no brain. No brain. No brain. He's, he's coming he's, all ground. He's safe. Yeah. He's safe. He's safe. He's safe. He's safe. He's safe. No, no, no video replay. He's safe. Right. Okay. Right. The three referees. Right. The three big referees. Right. Right. No, the says, holy yes. Yeah, the holy you know, right. The holy riff, the holy rosh, and the holy rambam. But, say but yes, you bring up an interesting yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. What's the basis of the rivet? So, that, so, that, that so that, so that, so right. So questions like that, then we have to dig in deeper, and maybe right. the acharonim. That's where the acharonim come into play, right? right? right. So I, maybe I have to do some recently. Now I gave some. I gave. I gave myself some homework. Hopefully, right. I have you know, some acharonim on. So we'll see. Okay. So let's go. So let's go further. So then. The Kasvu, you know, and they write, so they write, the Kasvu, they write, let's see, they write, they had to explicitly, I don't know, explicitly, clearly, maybe clearly, I don't know, clearly, that that they say, they say, so that's talking about Rabbi Zera and Rabbi Yehuda, they say in the Jerusalem Talmud, right? <laughs> Because that's where it comes from first. That's the first time we see it in our sugya, on our Mishnah, in the Jerusalem Talmud, in the Yerushalmi. For some reason, Rebbe Zera and, and Rav Yehuda, they say every bracha needs Shem Malchus. But why here? Why not the beginning of brachas, right? Right where the very first Mishnah where we start making learning about any bracha you know, in Masekta Brachos, why not a big announcement? Why not a Mishnah, right? Isn't that Mishnah worthy? Like, what's a Bracha? What's a Bracha? You know, Bracha needs Shema Malkus, right? But they, but they were compelled. Rebbe Zeyra was compelled with Rabbi Yehuda. They were compelled that there was something about these Birkas Riyah that we may have a doubt. We may have a suffering. Right. Even with the Rambam, he wrote the word Nami. Yeah. Also. Yes. Also. So also. that means there's a Havamina that may be but a dumb. This is the first mention. Now the Yerushami Rebbe Zera and Rebbe Zera on our Mishnah in Yerushami, they bring it up first. So, so what was driving them? What was driving Rebbe Zera and Rabbi Yehuda 
to mention this here, right? That, and they say so. They say so, right? They say in brachas, right? Perak tes, right? Perak tes, ninth chapter. Is Rebbe's mm -hmm. ever mentioned on the board right now? No, but but we've been, you know, we we've look. Been I mean, how long we've we been doing? We've been talking about this okay. for like you know, a week, week and a half, right? We we took the journey. We started I, I we started that. our mission, and I'll tell you what, it may be worthwhile. To take a day or, and go into the Yerushalmi and see and go through the Sogi and the Yerushalmi and the Gemara. Because they're really pulling a lot from the Yerushalmi, you know? So in the Yerushalmi, they say, who says Rabbi Zeira and Rabbi Yehuda? They say, they say so. They say so, it's Halakha. This is Halakha. Halakha Aleph, the first Halakha. Okay. Then in the Teshuva, I'm not sure whose Teshuva this would be, so I have to figure this out. The teshuva. The way it writes it in Teshuvah is the, the, the ordering is Klaus. So it's, it's Klau, it's like the Klau Dalit, so Klau 4, um, probably Sif. What? Oh, it's not like Sif. What's an S? Probably Sif, I'm guessing Sif Gimel. I have to look this up. I have to figure out where this Teshuvah is. So probably Sif 3. So that's the, it's the in the Teshuvah. I'm not sure whose Teshuvah this is. And then Gam Kane. So we're gonna see this a lot. Gam Kane also, like so also. So also Kasav writes, writes the Rosh. Shisha 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 Luhu that he asked them. He asked it. Ask it or ask them. Let's just say ask ask it on. The beer yeah. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what this means a little bit here. On the beer <coughs> so This is on the bracha. This is on the blessing. And this is referring to the yam hagadol. The yam hagadol. Okay. Yam. This is the med. Oh, here we go again. Mediterranean. Hopefully, I got it right. M E D period. What is it? M E D period. M E D period. Period. Med period. Mediterranean. It's just abbreviated, M-E-D. Oh, M-E-D. Oh, yeah, we can cheat. Okay, Meta. Here, I'll throw an I in there and see if that helps. I don't know. Mediterranean, however it's spelled, harder than Mississippi. <laughs> the, med the Mediterranean Sea. Because that's what that's the first time we see it. Because in the Mishnah, the only time it mentions the concept of Parakim, the only time it mentions the, 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 the concept of Parakim, it is on... The, the, in the Mishnah, the, you know, the halakha, the bracha of saying, you know, the blessing on, on the Mediterranean Sea, on, on the Yama Gadol, the Great Sea. But then, Tosfos is going to bring in the idea that, no, we say it, uh, we say it on everything. So here, I think we have a little bit of time. Let's see if we can just get the next part up. We're almost done, but see if we can just get the kasha up on the board. And we'll just go in a little more. Does that sound good? Do we have, do we have another 10 minutes? Is that, should we get the kasha? Or, uh, where's our idea? Yeah? Okay. Right, so let's see if we can get the kasha out. So I'm going to erase this. Now let's see if we can get the kasha out. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can go through this a little quicker. Okay. 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 And then, is it helpful to have the sheets? Are you guys following like along in the sheets? Okay. See, so we just had a smart board. I could just wipe the screen. Uh, you meant to send the next time you show up, we'll have a smart board. Oh, wow. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a Mashiach and an Eliak and a smart board. And then we'll really be in business. And the Rivet, the, the TSMA seem in the Rivet. We might as well go for the whole, might go for the whole package. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So then we're going, so we're going here on the base. USA. So he's going to bring up a Kasha. So he's going to bring up Kasha. So just a learning tip. I um, I cash this. I, I do this. I don't know. It's up to you guys how you want to do it. I always put a, a dash. Whenever I see a Kasha or a Teretz, whenever I see the question and answer, I try to just mark it. I mean, I, I don't know. I like to mark it so I know, oh, there's the question, there's the answer. There's the question, there's the answer. So if I cash this, it's a Kasha. It's a difficulty. Ve... Veha dome, veha dome, that's compared. It's a question. It's compared to them, 
right? Im, if, im, tzarich, if it needs, if it needs, shame of malchus, right? That's what we're talking about. Does it need shame u malchus? Does it need the name of Hashem and the mention of kingship? But hey, Shiv, and now he's going to answer. Now here is the answer. So I'll put the answer down here. So here's the kasha, and then here's going to be the answer. The hey, Shiv. Hey, Shiv, and he's going to answer. Da, no. Let's see. Da, lefa, no for yourself, no for you. Ki, because, or that, or kol. Uh, Rabo, say no, all of our rabbis. Rabo, say no, all of our rabbis. Kasukain, they all write it. They all write it. We had a whole long list of everyone's writing, not like the Ravid. We have a whole list. They kasvuchain, they all write. So, let's see, and then it goes, and then it goes, begam no hagim. Ah, here's a very interesting thing to look at. Begam no hagim. Now, he's bringing further proof. What proof is he bringing here? This is our minha. What have we actually been doing? What have we been doing for thousands of years? This is what the Jewish people have done. The Jewish people have a minha on this type of bracha to say shame of Malchus. So not only do we have this massive list of all these Rishonim that agree with the Rambam, the Gam no Hagim, this is the way we've been doing it for thousands of years, and when we come to a place where there's a miracle and we make the Bracha, we use Shem and Malchus on a, on a Bracha vision. Especially on like the lightning and thunder, which we'll do a lot more, or, or coming to the, the, the Mediterranean Sea, we still know where that is, and we make those Brachas. Anybody ever make that Bracha on the, one of the... Uh, yeah, well, on the Mediterranean Sea? Yeah, I, I'm always confused whether you're supposed to make the same bracha on, on any ocean. Right, so I think you can. And there is a concept that it's called the Yama Gadol, and, and even though there are seven oceans, they're all really attached, if you think about it. So right, like right. They're all, all the water is really attached. That's an interesting subject. Okay. So here we are. I think we have enough time we can just get through this. Um, how rivid. Poor Ravid, I feel like we should get him, we should get some more ammunition for the Ravid. Be Devarim um, Halu that these words these words and we'll, and we'll go through this and we'll define it real good. The Halu and there we go, another Roche Tebos. I think Ad Khan till here. So we'll see. All right, there it is. That's the end of this section. All right, so let's go through, and we'll learn the base Yosef through in this section. Okay, so what's he saying? So he's saying, the Hakesha. So this is like this kasha. The question. This question, right? This question. Um, the Hadome. And it's compared. I think it's said compared. Compared. Or compares. Compares to them. It compares to them. Even if. It needs, right, shame, name of Hashem, Malchus, kingship of Hashem. The Hashi, and then to answer, and then to answer, right, and then the answer is no, da, no, lecha, know yourself, and no, no to you, no to yourself, know it. Because, right, because, key, because all, call all, Rabbi Seno, all our rabbis, all the Rishonim we mentioned, our rabbis, they write so. They write like the Rambam. They all write like the Rambam. So the question, the question, so man, what's it like? What's it similar to? Like, if we need, do, do we need, is the Ravid right? Do we need Shema Malchus? Well, and one answer is, look, all our rabbis, all rabbis say no. Look at all the Rishonim we said that agree with the Rambam. No. Now here's another thing, but also, this has been our minhag. This has been our minhag. This is what we've been doing for thousands of years. When we, when everyone comes to the Yom Gadol, they say it with shame and Malchus. So it's also been our minhag. It's been our custom to do it this way. This has been our custom. So we, we, we've been doing it like this. And what we've been doing is, we've been doing it, we mention, when we make one of these type of brachas, we mention in it, or in them, 
when we make these type of brachas, we mention Shem HaMavos. We mention the name of Hashem, and we mention Mavos. So there's not, there's not to worry, not to be concerned, there's not to worry of the words, for the words of the rivet, right? Well, I'm missing, where do you get the rivet from? Because the rivet is the one that's disagreeing with the Ramba. No, 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 where, where, where does it say rivet? Rivet. The divrei rivet. Uh, in, the, in these words, in these words, um, Adkan, I think that's Adkan, until here. Or probably Khan, until here. Adkan, yeah. Or, or until here, because it means it's the end. I don't know, the period. Period, mic drop. <laughs> I don't know, Adkan, right. until here. I don't know. So, but, but here, so this would be, okay, so I, I, could, I could see if I have any macaroni on this. I don't know, I have to figure it out. I did, I did Brother Sham, I bought, I bought a book, I think it was an Asian Torah, the Kolo put together all these kedushim on, uh, on Brachos, so I could look up to see if they say anything here. But here is where, here's where, dun, 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 I wasn't planning on this, but here, here's a perfect place where we need acharonim. Like this is where the beautiful, ah, uh, there, I did it backwards. But it will end like this. Our achronim, achronim, right? Our achronim, our later rabbis, achronim, they're going to be all over this. They're going to be all over this. What are they going to be all over? This. Aim the This is what we were talking about before. Not worry. Not worry about what? Probably not worry about making a bracha levatala. That's my guess. That's my spar. That's my theory. Right, well, let's see what the acronym say. But my theory is that we, we're concerned. If the Ravid's right, are we making a bracha libatala? If the Ravid's right, if the Ravid's right that we're using shame and malchus, right? If the Ravid's right, if the Ravid's right, the next time we see lightning and we make the bracha on lightning with the shame of malchus, the next time there's Rosh we go to Eretz Yisrael and we see the Mediterranean Sea, we make the bracha with shame of malchus, the next time we make any of these brachas, you know, are should we be concerned with making a bracha of tal? My spirit, my svara is aim lechush. Is that if the rivet is right, then are these bracha libatalas, or is the rivet really saying that's a lot no, more powerful you know, than yeah. saying don't worry about it? Don't worry about it. Yeah. So don't that's what I think it. he means. That's what I think the base Yosef means. He's saying yeah. say yeah. shem yeah. Um, and don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. But okay, question on vahadona. Yeah. Why does it have the v? What's the? Did I did I do that correctly? Is it I a, think you did. Right. I'm not. I can tell you this truth. I'm not. I have to think about why he uses a doma. I'm not. I'm not. The uh, doma doesn't bother me. It's the the v. The the, the ha, Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why he's putting doma there. It seems it's similar to it. It's similar to them. I have to think about that a little more. I I don't know. And maybe well, and maybe question. maybe we do the My bach. question is where it says for ha. Why do you say Vihadoma? Doma, I'm not I'm not hundred percent on Doma. He doesn't know about Doma. I'm not hundred percent on Doma. I don't know about the Vav and the Hay at the beginning. But Mizrahi Shem over Shabbos, I'll try to go through the Bach also a little bit and we'll see if the Bach helps us out here. But I, I think I I'm, I'm I don't know. I don't know where you guys are at. I am I'm, I'm all fired up to go in the yeah. Shulchan Aruch. Are you? I'm fired up to go in the Shulchan Aruch because I want to do more of the Brachos. We've been through one journey. We can even go to the Mission Board, but I want to go back into the comments. And the thunder and the lightning, and I want to work on that one a little bit too. Like I don't know. Um, yeah. Are you going with Yehuda this Shabbos? And I, where? Where is? Uh, oh, this is Yehuda Frager. Yeah, I can try. I can try to learn with him. Yeah.